salute. Salute, 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 salute. Wow. So, man, you know who it is. Boxing, nocturnal thoughts. Coming at you with a video. We're on the other side of Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk, man, becomes a champion again. Uh, he he um, remains a champion, remains victorious. Um, and my hat goes off to Alexander Usyk. Bow, man, all the way, man. You know, I got to salute him properly. Salute to Alexander Usyk, you know what I'm saying? Um, I had him winning this fight, but I didn't make a prediction video. But just based off his last performance against Anthony Joshua, I didn't think that Anthony Joshua would be able to make the adjustments necessary to win this fight the way he did against Andy Ruiz. You know what I'm saying? But Alexander Usyk, he just really impressed me over this course of time. I was late to Alexander Usyk, but I did some study on him before he had his first heavyweight debut. Um, but then when he fought Chaz Witherspoon, I couldn't give him full credit because Chaz Witherspoon was like a replacement fighter. He was coming off the couch. He was out of shape and he, he no mas. He quit on the stool. Um, and then against Derek, Chis I always want to roll Chisora, Chisora, I don't know, Derek Chisora. Um, I gave him a little bit more credit, but I really didn't think that he was going to be able to stand up to AJ's power. I thought AJ would be able to hit him with something that would... You know what I'm saying? Fold him over or knock him out. So when he won the first fight against Anthony Joshua, I was impressed to the point where, you know, I'm going to get a man credit. And it didn't look like it was a fluke. Like, don't, like, Andy Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua, even though he beat Anthony Joshua in more dramatic fashion, it sort of looked like it was a fluke. He got dropped. He got up. He caught Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua was discombobulated. His equilibrium was you know what I'm saying, gone, and he finished the job, he knocked him down four times, but it still had the writings of somewhat a one-time lightning in a bottle type of a situation, and then in the rematch, Anthony Joshua made the adjustments, and he outboxed Andy Ruiz, played it safe, didn't let Andy Ruiz get in the inside and throw those octopus punches, so I gave Anthony Joshua his credit for that, even though I felt like knockouts matter, and I felt like he should have went for the kill with Andy Ruiz, and he didn't. I still gave him credit for making the adjustments and, and doing the smart thing and boxing and, and, and uh, securing the bag and securing the victory and getting his belts back. And when he got his belts back, he was very, very over celebratory. Like he really, really, really celebrated, celebrated that victory when he got his belts back against Andy Ruiz. He got a picture, he had the afro, he had his arms out with the belts on him and he was roaring like a lion big loud ah got my belts back like dave Chappelle when he got his show back i'm gonna get my show back you know what i'm saying andy ruiz got his belts back and he was happy so it's just a turn it's ironic but it's like turning the tables a turn of events for him to lose for the second time in a row against Alexander Usyk, and to see him take the belts and pitch them out of the ring you know what i'm saying it's tarnishing to his um his character to his marketability to his reputation is is tarnishing you know what i'm saying now first of all i'm not going to condemn nor condone nobody's perfect everybody makes mistakes um you know what i'm saying there's a proper way to do things there's a way to do things the wrong way and learn from it i'm not i'm not um above making mistakes i'm not above having a, a like you know they say he had a meltdown. We'll get to that later. But I'm just saying I'm not here to judge Anthony Joshua. And my thing is, you know what I'm saying, I'm not going to kick a man while he down. I'm just going to do my assessment of the situation. You dig what I'm saying? But I'm not going to kick this man while he down and um, try to make it look like uh, I'm above him or I'm... I'm not capable of making the same mistakes or having the same type of a meltdown like we human beings. But at the same time, we keep it 100% on the assessment of the situation. So let me back up a little bit and just talk about the fight. And then I move on to the, the, the meltdown because it kind of stole the show and it took away some of the glory from Alexander Usyk. And I feel like that was um, unnecessary. And that was, that was um, 
not the right thing to do you know what i'm saying it's like you frown upon that like it tarnishes it it takes away it's a it's a negative you know what i'm saying and uh we will highlight a negative and try to put a spin on it so that it doesn't keep to repeat itself now Alexander Usyk his performance and Anthony Joshua's performance it wasn't the most exciting fight in the world you know what I'm saying I was looking for Anthony Joshua to make more mistakes you know he are to make more um improvements based off of his based off of his mistakes in the first fight he, he lacked some um intensity as far as people wanted to see him impose his size not try to sit there and, and out slick a slickster don't try to box outbox a boxer but use your advantages you obviously the bigger stronger man take advantage of that you know what i'm saying so the thing is he let go of mccracken because mccracken the whole time in the first fight was sitting there talking about brilliant 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 you're running the fight brilliant and it was like you know anthony joshua man you're getting outboxed period point blank and uh, i wanted to see him improve his attack to the body I wanted to see him be more aggressive, use his weight more, use his strength more, just make adjustments to see if he could um, beat Alexander Usyk. And I thought that the main thing he would have to do was slow Usyk down by attacking the body nonstop. And um, I, don't, I didn't think it was gonna be an easy task. You know what I'm saying? I did see some improvements, adjustments, with Anthony Joshua it's obviously that that uh you know Garcia had him working on specific things that he tried to implement in the fight in the rematch you know what I'm saying but I didn't think he was going to be able to take everything and learn that and apply that in one camp and then come and beat uh, Alexander Usyk who's been you know what I'm saying who's mastering his craft and it, just a bad style matchup for you to begin with I just didn't see Anthony Joshua being able to deconstruct his his ability and reconstruct it back up to something that would be Alexander Usyk but he did make some adjustments he did go to the body more he was a little bit more assertive and he did try to impose his size a little bit more and he was hitting Alexander with some shots to the body that made me see you know Alexander Usyk also is just a tough tough dude and can take a heavyweight punch you know what I'm saying um he's just and Alexander Usyk just has the footwork, the southpaw. He's slick. His hand-eye coordination is very, very accurate. He can throw little punches from different angles that you really can't see. And he's just way too fast for a fighter like Anthony Joshua. Just too fast, too crafty, too experienced. Stylistically, it's a bad matchup. He's a great boxer. You know what I'm saying? He just has all those different components. He can slip and hit you with a shot before you can make an adjustment. He can come over the top of your jab, he can pivot and he can counter you and hit you on the top of the temple, or he can slide down to this side, throw this shot straight, dip your punch, catch you, spin out, and then clip you again and then back out without getting touched because he's so fast. And he has a variety of combination and a variety of punches and he can punch from different angles. They don't have to be, you know what I'm saying, straight down the line. Anthony Joshua's shots have to be straight down the line. He has to catch you right there in the target. If you're a moving target, he's always behind you a step or two. He's trying to adjust. He did get in some like bolo jabs. He did get in some punches to the body that were successful, but he couldn't do it in, in combination form. He couldn't do it multiple. Like I could see if Anthony Joshua was a little bit faster, he caught Usyk in the corner one time. He hooked him to the body shot. It put him in the corner. He threw another body shot. It kept, it kept him in the corner. And right when he was going to throw it straight down the pipe, he had him lined up. Alexander Usyk just moved out the way, and he threw that punch, and it was so slow. He just threw that punch, and Alexander Usyk then spent, pivot, turned, out, turned around, and now Anthony Josh was basically in the corner, you know, thinking about, thinking about, what punch should, should, did I, should have I thrown? What happened to the punch I just threw? Why it didn't connect? Where is he at now? Where is he coming from? You can just see the gear spinning and Anthony Joshua just thinking slow motion. And it's like the Matrix. When you're shooting bullets at Neo and Neo just slowing the bullets down. He can dodge the bullets. He can stop the bullets. He can, you know, do what he can manipulate you. So Oles Danny Usyk just can pull Anthony Joshua. It's like a puppet string, like Pinocchio. He just, he, he's, he, it would take it would take a lot 
for Anthony Joshua to be able to ever beat Oleksandr Yusik because of the style, because of the speed, because of the punt selection, because of the footwork, because of the pivots, because of, you know, a multitude of things that I don't think Anthony Joshua would be able to overcome. So with all that being said, I like to see Oleksandr in the future against Tyson Fury. We'll talk about that later. But for now, all the props go to Oleksandr Yusik for uh, overcoming all the issues that his entire, you know, his, his fellow countrymen are going through. He, he was able to put that to the side, focus on his training camp, get in good shape. He didn't come in out of shape and overweight. He didn't come in with a, he didn't underestimate his opponent and say, last time I beat him easy, I'm gonna just beat him easy again and come in and take his man for granted and come in sloppy and shit like that. He did what he had to do to win the fight. Now, Anthony Joshua, after the fight, he showed a different side of his character. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people giving him a pass. Some people, you know, kicking him while he's down. I assess the situation. To, I assess the situation to me. I kind of, kind of seen it coming, because even before the fight, I was watching interviews before the fight, and he was really talk, trying to say this is just about a competitive thing, and it's not about the belts. And that was like a little flag going off. Like he kept trying to, he, he kept trying to put emphasis on well, it's only really about the competition and improving. It's not about the belts. And that, shit, and that didn't really make sense to me. I couldn't really hone in on what he really meant by it's not about the belts. You know, it just didn't add up and it, just, it didn't fit his past character as far as he was all about the belts. It was all about the championships. I kind of got what he was saying a little bit as far as he just, he really wanted to be victorious and be a champion. He just wanted to be a champion. It's not about the hardware and the trophies. I kind of understood what he was saying, but at the same time, the way he was saying it, he didn't sound like he had the confidence that he was going to win. It just kind of sounded like he was already given his his speech of, of, you know, being a champion without being a champion or winning without winning. You know what I'm saying? Or, or losing but still learning how to take a win from it. It's just like he was trying to be philosophical and he was saying things that to me didn't sound like he was as hungry. It sounded like he trained hard for a competition. Like he was like, it's about the competition. So it's like he trained hard, but he just wasn't able to really dial in on that really killer instinct to say, I'm winning this. It's like when you're trying to get a goal or you're trying to get a target and that target is very, very specific. Like if it's a belt or if it's a trophy, it's, it's right there. It's something that's tangible. So you kind of, you know the end game. So when you focus on that thing and you in kill mode, nothing else can distract you. It's like you got on the blinders, like a horse, like a racehorse. You got the blinders on and all you can see is those belts because the belts represent something. The, 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 the victorious moment and the celebration afterwards, but the belts signify what the whole sacrifice and training is all about. So when you talking all, all this like kind of ambiguous, are you talking all this intangible stuff about uh self victory and you know more moral victories it's kind of like you shooting outside of that goal like you you're not really reaching for that belt you're kind of reaching just to you know grab what's around it because you're going to be able to find moral victories in competition that's why they came out with like participation awards and shit like that because you know if you run the race even if you lose if you ran i'm gonna give you your credit for running some people won't even run some people won't perform. Some people won't even, some people freeze. You know what I mean? Some people won't even participate. Some people will talk a whole lot of shit and then won't even, won't even run in a race. You know, at least you ran, at least you tried, at least you shot for the moon. You just missed it, you land with the stars. And he was kind of talking like that. Like, man, I'm gonna shoot for the moon, but if I lose, I'm just gonna do my best. That's what he was saying. I'm just gonna do my best. And if it's not good enough, you know, it's not good enough. I don't really think he felt like that though. Because he didn't act like that after he left, after he lost and his best wasn't good enough. He didn't act like nonchalant, like, eh, you know, I lost, you know, I just, it wasn't my, he the best man won. He kind of threw um, a little bit of a tantrum. And I think that was the true AJ, how he really felt. And I think if he would have got that out of his system before the fight, win, lose, or draw, I think he would have had a different reaction after the fight. And I think he probably was holding on to a lot of that. And if he would let that go before the fight, 
he might have been victorious in the fight. You know what I'm saying? Because I know if he would have won that fight, I'm not going to say like 100%, but I feel like if he would have won that fight, he wouldn't have threw those belts out of the ring. He would have held those belts up and celebrated. You know what I'm saying? And um, the flag, taking the flag off of Usyk and taking the spotlight off of Usyk, like Usyk, after he won, he really did the natural thing where he kind of fell to his knees and started to pray, like, thank God. And AJ almost seemed like he didn't even want to give him that moment. Like, he walked up to him and tried to, like, impose his... He tried to do whatever... He tried to impose himself on that moment. Like, he tried to go down there and pray with him, but it didn't look real. It didn't look authentic. It looked like he just wanted to have the spotlight on him still. Like, it was all about him. And even after he lost, and he threw the belts, and he came back, and he took the mic, and he did... It was seemed like he was trying to make the whole moment all about him. And he should have just let Alexander Usyk have his moment because it's just bigger than it's just bigger than AJ and it's bigger than Usyk and it's bigger than Ukraine and it's bigger than Russia. It's bigger than all that situation. But at that moment in time, that was Alexander Usyk's moment. And you try to take it and you try to make it all about you, your past, and you know what you had to do to get where you were at. And nobody taking that from you. But that wasn't the time and the moment for you to have your moment. That was his moment. You know what I'm saying? That's to me where I say, um, I don't know if the word is uncool for whatever the case. It just wasn't. It was a bad tact. It was a bad look. It was a tarnish. It wasn't to kick the man. It wasn't to say it was the worst thing in the world. He tried to come back. And he came back and he tried to clean it up and give Alexander Usyk his credit and his props and hip hip hoorays and champ champs and champ champs and pass on the back and you know what I'm saying well done and you beat me with skill and. You know, so it was a moment where AJ still got the self-reflecting to do. He ain't perfect. He had it. That was a bad choice, in my opinion, of a reaction. But as a reaction, I think it wasn't even 100% authentic reaction. It still was kind of what he was trying to do, what he felt like people felt like he should do. Where he's still trying to, like, he's still trying to figure out what people want from him to do. You know, and that's gonna happen years and years down the line when he's retired and he really matures as a person and everything else he always reminded me more of a frank bruno uh type of a personality you know what i'm saying gentle giant heart of gold you can really uh hurt his feelings and stuff like that but anyways look that's all i'm gonna say i take my hat off to alexander Usyk, um anthony joshua you know what i'm saying in in defeat um Hopefully he's able to put things back together and if he goes back to the drawing board, I think he still can have some good fights in boxing. This is just one that he took an L on and um, kind of a poor, poor uh, sportsmanship, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Alexander Usyk handled it well and um, that's the main thing. Alexander Usyk handled Anthony Joshua's performance after the fight, during the fight and after the fight, Alexander Usyk, you know, set the example on how you're all supposed to try to act in moments like this. He stayed composed, he stayed cool, he let Anthony Joshua have his moment, even though it was supposed to be his moment, he let Anthony Joshua have his moment. He just kept back and then still he knowing, he knowing, we all knowing what, it, what the real is as far as, you know what I'm saying, he came out victorious he put on a performance he had a great performance and uh he's the champion and his countrymen and what they're going through that's going to do what it's going to do you know we came really from there we can't really speak on that you dig what i'm saying but at the end of the day we can see that uh he's going through a lot he's carrying his country on his back that's what i'm saying he's carrying his countrymen on his back and he did it with uh very um just a very high level of um manliness that we have to salute put it like that and i'm gonna wrap this video up nocturnal thoughts man salute 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 bow